Preface to the Cambridge Book of Poetry for Children, edited by Kenneth Graham. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. The Cambridge Book of Poetry for Children by Kenneth Graham. Preface. In compiling a selection of poetry for children, a conscientious editor is bound to find himself confronted with limitations so numerous as to be almost disheartening. For he has to remember that his task is not to provide simple examples of the whole range of English poetry, but to set up a wicket gate, giving attractive admission to that wide domain with its woodland glades, its pasture and arable, its walled and scented gardens here and there, and so to its sunlit and sometimes misty mountain tops, all to be more fully explored later by those who are tempted on by the first glimpse. And always he must be proclaiming to the small tourists that there is joy, light, and fresh air in that delectable country. Briefly, I think that blank verse generally, and the drama as a whole, may very well be left for readers of a riper age. Indeed, I believe that those who can ignore the plays of Shakespeare and his fellow Elizabethans till they are sixteen will be no losers in the long run. The bulk, too, of seventeenth and eighteenth century poetry, bending under its burden of classical form and crowded classical allusion, requires a completed education and a wide range of reading for its proper appreciation. Much else also is barred. There are the questions of subject, of archaic language and thought, and a vocational expression, which will occur to everyone. Then there is dialect, and here one has to remember that these poems are intended for use at the very time that a child is painfully acquiring a normal, often quite arbitrary, orthography. Is it fair to that child to hammer into him, perhaps literally, that porridge is spelt porridge? and next minute to present it to him in an official reader under the guise of parich. I think not, and I have accordingly kept as far as possible to the normal, though at some loss of material. In the output of those writers who have deliberately written for children, it is surprising how largely the subject of death is found to bulk dead fathers and mothers, dead brothers and sisters, dead uncles and aunts, dead puppies and kittens, dead birds, dead flowers, dead dolls. A compiler of obituary verse for the delight of children could make a fine fat volume with little difficulty. I have turned off this mournful tap of tears as far as possible, preferring that children should read of the joy of life, rather than revel in sentimental thrills of imagined bereavement. There exists, moreover, any quantity of verse for children which is merely verse, and nothing more. It lacks the vital spark of heavenly flame, and is useless to a selector of poetry. And then there is the whole corpus of verse, most of it of the present day, which is written about children and this has even more carefully to be avoided. When the time comes that we send our parents to school, it will prove very useful to the compilers of their primers. All these restrictions have necessarily led to two results. First, that this collection is chiefly lyrical, and that, after all, is no bad thing. Lyric verse may not be representative of the whole range of English poetry, but as an introduction to it, as a wicket gate, there is no better portal. 
The second result is that it is but a small sheaf that these gleanings amount to. But for those children who frankly do not care for poetry, it will be more than enough. And for those who love it and delight in it, no selection could ever be sufficiently satisfying. Kenneth Graham, October 1915 End of preface. This recording is in the public domain. Merry Are the Bells, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. For the very smallest ones, rhymes and jingles. We begin with some jingles and old rhymes, for rhymes and jingles must not be despised. They have rhyme, rhythm, melody, and joy, and it is well for beginners to know that these are all elements of poetry, so that they will turn to it with pleasant expectations. Merry are the bells. Merry are the bells, and merry would they ring. Merry was myself, and merry could I sing, with a merry ding-dong, happy, gay, and free, and a merry sing-song, happy, let us be. Waddle goes your gate, and hollow are your hose, noddle goes your pate, and purple is your nose. Merry is your sing-song, happy, gay, and free, with a merry ding-dong, happy let us be. Merry have we met, and merry have we been, merry let us part, and merry meet again, with our merry sing-song, happy, gay, and free, with a merry ding-dong, happy let us be. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Safe in Bed, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, bless the bed that I lay on. Four corners to my bed, five angels there lie spread. Two at my head, two at my feet, one at my heart, my soul to keep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Jenny Wren read for librivox dot org by betty b jenny wren fell sick upon a merry time in came robin redbreast and brought her sops of wine eat well of the sop jenny drink well of the wine thank you robin kindly you shall be mine jenny she got well and stood upon her feet and told robin plainly she loved him not a bit robin being angry hopped on a twig saying out upon you fie upon you bold-faced jig End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Curly Locks, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Curly Locks, Curly Locks, wilt thou be mine? Thou shalt not wash dishes, nor yet feed the swine, but sit on a cushion and sew a fine seam, and feed upon strawberries, sugar, and cream. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Pussycat Mew, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Pussycat Mew jumped over a coal, and in her best petticoat burnt a great hole. Pussycat Mew shall have no more milk till she has mended her gown of silk. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Draw a pail of water, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Draw a pail of water for my lady's daughter. Father's a king, mother's a queen. My two little sisters are dressed in green, stamping marigolds and parsley. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I saw a ship a sailing. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. I saw a ship a sailing, a sailing on the sea, and it was full of pretty things for baby and for me. There were sweetmeats in the cabin and apples in the hold. The sails were made of silk and the masts were made of gold. The four and twenty sailors that stood between the decks were four and twenty white mice with chains about their necks. The captain was a duck with a packet on his back 
and when the ship began to move the captain cried quack quack end of poem this recording is in the public domain the nut tree read for LibriVox.org by betty b i had a little nut tree nothing would it bear but a silver nutmeg and a golden pear the king of spain's daughter she came to see me and all because of my little nut tree i skipped over water i danced over sea and all the birds in the air couldn't catch me end of poem this recording is in the public domain my maid mary read for librivox dot org by recording person my maid mary my maid mary she minds the dairy while i go a hoeing and a mowing each morn gaily run the reel and the little spinning wheel whilst i am singing and mowing my corn end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Wind and the Fisherman Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person The Wind and the Fisherman When the wind is in the east, tis neither good for man or beast. When the wind is in the north, the skilful fisher goes not forth. When the wind is in the south, it blows the bait in the fish's mouth. When the wind is in the west, then tis at the very best. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Blow, Wind, Blow Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person Blow, Wind, Blow Blow, Wind, Blow And go, Mill, go That the miller may grind his corn That the baker may take it And into rolls make it And send us some hot in the morn End of poem This recording is in the public domain All Busy Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person All Busy The cock's on the housetop blowing his horn The bulls in the barn are threshing off corn The maids in the meadows are making the hay The ducks in the river are swimming away End of poem This recording is in the public domain Winter Has Come Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir. Cold and raw, the north wind doth blow, bleak in the morning early. All the hills are covered with snow, and winters now come fairly. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poor Robin. Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir. The north wind doth blow, and we shall have snow, and what will poor Robin do then, poor thing? He'll sit in the barn, and keep himself warm, and hide his head under his wing, poor thing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Have a Little Sister Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir I Have a Little Sister they call her Peep Peep. She wades the waters deep, deep, deep. She climbs the mountains high, high, high. Poor little creature, she has but one eye. A star. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In Marble Walls Read for LibriVox.org by recording person in marble walls in marble walls as white as milk lined with a skin as soft as silk within a fountain crystal clear a golden apple doth appear no doors there are to this stronghold yet thieves break in and steal the gold an egg end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Moon by Eliza Lee Follen Read for LibriVox.org 
by recording person. The moon. Oh, look at the moon. She is shining up there. Oh, mother, she looks like a lamp in the air. Last week she was smaller and shaped like a bow. But now she's grown bigger and round as an O. Pretty moon, pretty moon, how you shine on the door and make it all bright on my nursery floor. You shine on my playthings and show me their place. And I love to look up at your pretty bright face. And there is a star close by you, and maybe the small twinkling star is your little baby. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Star by Anne and Jane Taylor Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person The Star Twinkle, twinkle, little star How I wonder what you are Up above the world so high Like a diamond in the sky When the blazing sun is gone When he nothing shines upon Then you show your little light Twinkle, twinkle, all the night Then the traveller in the dark Thanks you for your tiny spark he could not see which way to go, if you did not twinkle so. In the dark blue sky you keep, and often through my curtains peep, for you never shut your eye till the sun is in the sky. As your bright and tiny spark lights the traveller in the dark, though I know not what you are, twinkle, twinkle, little star. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kitty by Mrs. E. Prentice. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Once there was a little kitty, whiter than snow, in a barn she used to frolic long time ago. In the barn a little mousie ran to and fro, for she heard the kitty coming long time ago. Two eyes had little kitty, black as a slow, and they spied the little mousie long time ago. Four paws had little kitty, paws soft as dough, and they caught the little mousie long time ago. Nine teeth had little kitty, all in a row, and they bit the little mousie long time ago. When the teeth bit little Mousie, little Mousie cried, Oh! But she got away from Kitty long time ago. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kitty, How to Treat Her. Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir. I like little pussy. Her coat is so warm, and if I don't hurt her, she'll do me no harm. So I'll not pull her tail, nor drive her away, but pussy and I very gently will play. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kitty, what she thinks of herself. By W. B. Rands. Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir. I am the cat of cats. I am the everlasting cat. Cunning and old and sleek as jam, the everlasting cat. I hunt the vermin in the night, the everlasting cat. For I see best without the light, the everlasting cat. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Seashell by Amy Lowell Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir Seashell, seashell, sing me a song, oh please! A song of ships and sailormen, of parrots and tropical trees of islands lost in the Spanish main, which no man ever may see again, of fishes and corals under the waves, and seahorses stabled in great green caves. Seashell, seashell, sing me a song, oh please. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. The Cuckoo Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir The cuckoo's a bonny bird. She sings as she flies. She brings us good tidings and tells us no lies. She sucks little bird's eggs to make her voice clear and never cries cuckoo till the spring of the year. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Bird Scarer's Song Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir We have plowed our land, we have sown our seed, we have made all neat and gay. Then take a bit and leave a bit. Away, birds, away. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cradle Song Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir Sleep, baby, sleep. Our cottage veil is deep. The little lamb is on the green with woolly fleece so soft and clean. Sleep, baby, sleep. Sleep, baby, sleep. Down where the woodbines creep. Be always like the lamb so mild, a kind and sweet and gentle child. Sleep, baby, sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Good Night by Anne and Jane Taylor Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf Little baby, lay your head on your pretty cradle bed. Shut your eye peeps, now the day and the light are gone away. All the clothes are tucked in tight. Little baby dear, good night. Yes, my darling, well I know how bitter the wind doth blow, and the winter's snow and rain patter on the window pane. But they cannot come in here to my little baby dear. For the window shutteth fast till the stormy night is past, And the curtains warm are spread round about her cradle bed. So till morning shineth bright, little baby dear, good night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Daffodils by Shakespeare Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Daffodils that come before the swallow dares, And take the winds of March with beauty. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Daffodils by Robert Herrick Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Fair daffodils, we weep to see you haste away so soon, as yet the early rising sun has not attained his noon. Stay, stay, until the hasting day has run but to the even song, and having prayed together, we will go with you along. We have short time to stay as you. We have as short a spring, as quick a growth to meet decay as you or anything. We die as your hours do, and dry away like to the summer's rain, or as the pearls of morning's dew, ne'er to be found again. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Daffodils by William Wordsworth. Read by Lynn Thompson. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay 
ten thousand saw i at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance the waves beside them danced but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee a poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company i gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought for oft when on my couch i lie in vacant or in pensive mood they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Months by Sarah Coleridge, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Months. January brings the snow, makes our feet and fingers glow. February brings the rain, thaws the frozen lake again. March brings breezes loud and shrill stirs the dancing daffodil april brings the primrose sweet scatters daisies at our feet may brings flocks of pretty lambs skipping by their fleecy dams june brings tulips lilies roses fills the children's hands with posies hot july brings cooling showers apricots and gillyflowers august brings the sheaves of corn then the harvest home is born warm september brings the fruit sportsmen then begin to shoot fresh october brings the pheasant then to gather nuts is pleasant dull november brings the blast then the leaves are whirling fast chill december brings the sleet blazing fire and christmas treat sarah coleridge end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Wind in a Frolic by William Howitt Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Wind in a Frolic The wind one morning sprang up from sleep, saying, Now for a frolic, now for a leap, now for a madcap galloping chase, I'll make a commotion in every place. So it swept with a bustle right through a great town, creaking the signs and scattering down, shutters and whisking with merciless squalls, old women's bonnets and gingerbread stalls there never was heard a much lustier shout as the apples and oranges trundled about and the urchins that stand with their thievish eyes forever on watch ran off each with the prize then away to the field it went blustering and humming and the cattle all wondered whatever was coming it plucked by their tails the grave matronly cows and tossed the colts manes all about their brows till offended at such a familiar salute they all turned their backs and stood sullenly mute so on it went capering and playing its pranks whistling with reeds on the broad river's banks puffing the birds as they sat on the spray or the traveller grave on the king's highway it was not too nice to hustle the bags of the beggar and flutter his dirty rags twas so bold that it feared not to play its joke with the doctor's wig or the gentleman's cloak through the forest it roared and cried gaily now you sturdy old oaks i'll make you bow and it made them bow without much ado or it cracked their great branches through and through then it rushed like a monster on cottage and farm striking their dwellers with sudden alarm and they ran out like bees in a midsummer swarm there were dames with their kerchiefs tied over their caps to see if their poultry were free from mishaps the turkeys they gobbled the geese screamed aloud and the hens crept to roost in a terrified crowd there was rearing of ladders and logs laying on where the thatch from the roof threatened soon to be gone but the wind had passed on and had met in a lane with a schoolboy who panted and struggled in vain for it tossed him and twirled him then passed and he stood with his hat in a pool and his shoe in the mud but away went the wind in its holiday glee and now it was far on the billowy sea and the lordly ships felt its staggering blow and the little boat started to and fro but lo it was night and it sank to rest on the seabird's rock in the gleaming west laughing to think in its fearful fun how little of mischief 
it had done william howitt end of poem this recording is in the public domain the four sweet months by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by betty b the four sweet months first april she with mellow showers opens the way for early flowers then after her comes smiling may in a more sweet and rich array next enters june and brings us more gems than those two that went before then lastly july comes and she more wealth brings in than all those three robert herrick end of poem this recording is in the public domain glad day by w graham robertson read for librivox dot org by phil Schempf. here's another day dear here's the sun again peeping in his pleasant way through the window pane rise and let him in dear hail him hip hooray now the fun will all begin here's another day down the coppice path dear through the dewy glade when the morning took her bath what a splash she made up the wet wood way dear under dripping green run to meet another day brightest ever seen mushrooms in the field dear show their silver gleam what a dainty crop they yield firm as clouted cream cool as balls of snow dear sweet and fresh and round ere the early dew can go we must clear the ground such a lot to do dear such a lot to see how we ever can get through fairly puzzles me hurry up and out dear then away away in and out and round about here's another day end of poem this recording is in the public domain buttercups and daisies by mary howitt read for librivox dot org by damla ozdemir buttercups and daisies oh the pretty flowers coming ere the springtime to tell of sunny hours when the trees are leafless when the fields are bare buttercups and daisies spring up here and there welcome yellow buttercups welcome daisies white ye are in my spirit visioned a delight coming ere the springtime of sunny hours to tell speaking to our hearts of him who doeth all things well End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Merry Month of March by William Wordsworth. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. The cock is crowing, the stream is flowing, the small birds twitter, the lake doth glitter. The green field sleeps in the sun. The oldest and youngest are at work with the strongest. The cattle are grazing, their heads never raising. There are forty, feeding like one. Like an army defeated, the snow hath retreated, and now doth fare ill on the top of the bare hill. The ploughboy is whooping anon, anon. There's joy in the mountains. There's life in the fountains. Small clouds are sailing, blue sky prevailing. The rain is over and gone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. What the Birds Say by S. T. Coleridge. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf. Do you know what the birds say? The sparrow, the dove, the linnet, and the thrush say, I love and I love. In the winter they're silent. The wind is so strong. What it says I don't know, but it sings a loud song. But green leaves and blossoms and sunny warm weather and singing and loving all come back together. But the lark is so brimful of gladness and love, the green fields below him, the blue sky above, that he sings, and he sings, and for ever sings he. I love my love, and my love loves me.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Spring's Procession by Sidney Dobell. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. First came the primrose on the bank high, like a maiden looking forth from the window of a tower when the battle rolls below. So looked she, and saw the storms go by. Then came the windflower in the valley left behind, as a wounded maiden, pale with purple streaks of woe, when the battle has rolled by, wanders to and fro. So tottered she, dishevelled in the wind. Then came the daisies on the first of May, like a bannered show's advance, while the crowd runs by the way, with ten thousand flowers about them, they came trooping through the fields. As a happy people come, so came they. As a happy people come when the war has rolled away, with dance and tabor, pipe and drum, and all make holiday. Then came the cowslip, like a dancer in the fair. She spread her little mat of green, and on it danced she, with a fillet bound about her brow, a fillet round her happy brow, a golden fillet round her brow, and rubies in her hair. And a poem this recording is in the public domain. The Call of the Woods by Shakespeare, recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. Under the greenwood tree, who loves to lie with me, and tune his merry note unto the sweet bird's throat. Come hither, come hither, come hither. Here shall he see no enemy but winter and rough weather, who doth ambition shun and loves to live in the sun, seeking the food he eats and pleased with what he gets come hither come hither come hither here shall he see no enemy but winter and rough weather end of poem this recording is in the public domain a prescription for a spring morning by John Davidson. Read for LibriVox by Victoria Khan. At early dawn through London you must go until you come where long black hedgerows grow, with pink buds pearled with here and there a tree, and gates and stiles, and watch good country folk, and scent the spicy smoke of withered weeds that burn where gardens be, and in a ditch perhaps a primrose see. The rooks shall stalk the plough, larks mount the skies, blackbirds and speckled thrushes sing aloud, hid in the warm white cloud. Mantling the horn, and far away shall rise the milky low of cows and farmyard cries. From windy heavens the climbing sun shall shine, and February greet you like a maid in russet cloak arrayed, and you shall take her for your mistress fine and pluck a crocus for her valentine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Country Faith by Norman Gale Recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude Here in the country's heart where the grass is green Life is the same sweet life as it e'er hath been trust in a god still lives and the bell at morn floats with a thought of god o'er the rising corn god comes down in the rain and the crop grows tall this is the country faith and the best of all end of poem this recording is in the public domain
The Butterfly's Ball by William Roscoe Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio Come, take up your hats, and away let us haste To the butterfly's ball and the grasshopper's feast The trumpeter gadfly has summoned the crew And the rebels are now only waiting for you so said little robert and pacing along his merry companions came forth in a throng and on the smooth grass by the side of a wood beneath a broad oak that for ages had stood saw the children of earth and the tenants of air for an evening's amusement together repair and there came the beetle so blind and so black who carried the emmet his friend on his back and there was the gnat and the dragonfly too with all their relations green orange and blue and there came the moth with his plumage of down and the hornet in jacket of yellow and brown who with him the wasp his companion did bring but they promised that evening to lay by their sting and the sly little dormouse crept out of his hole and brought to the feast his blind brother the mole and the snail with his horns peeping out of his shell came from a great distance the length of an l a mushroom their table and on it was laid a water dock leaf which a tablecloth made the viands were various to each of their taste and the bee brought her honey to crown the repast then close on his haunches so solemn and wise the frog from a corner looked up to the skies and the squirrel well pleased such diversions to see mounted high overhead and looked down from a tree then out came the spider with fingers so fine to show his dexterity on the tight line from one branch to another his cobwebs he slung then quick as an arrow he darted along but just in the middle oh shocking to tell from his rope in an instant poor harlequin fell yet he touched not the ground but with talons outspread hung suspended in air at the end of a thread then the grasshopper came with a jerk and a spring very long was his leg though but short was his wing he took but three leaps and was soon out of sight then chirped his own praises the rest of the night with steps so majestic the snail did advance and promised the gazers a minuet to dance but they all laughed so loud that he pulled in his head and went in his own little chamber to bed then as evening gave way to the shadows of night their watchman the glow-worm came out with a light then home let us hasten while yet we can see for no watchman is waiting for you and for me so said little robert and pacing along his merry companions returned in a throng and a poem this recording is in the public domain a wish by samuel rogers read for librivox by victoria khan mine be a cot beside the hill a beehive's hum shall soothe my ear a willowy brook that turns a mill with many a fall shall linger near the swallow oft beneath my thatch shall twitter from her clay-built nest oft shall the pilgrim lift the latch and share my meal a welcome guest around my ivied porch shall spring each fragrant flower that drinks the dew and lucy at her wheel shall sing in russet gown and apron blue the village church among the trees where first our marriage vows were given with merry peals shall swell the breeze and point with taper spire to heaven 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wishing by William Allingham. Read for LibriVox.org by recording person. Wishing. Ring ting. I wish I were a primrose, a bright yellow primrose blowing in the spring. The stooping boughs above me, the wandering bee to love me, the fern and moss to creep across, and the elm tree for our king. Nay, stay. I wish I were an elm tree, a great lofty elm tree with green leaves gay. The winds would set them dancing, the sun and moonshine glancing. The birds would house among the boughs and sweetly sing. Oh no, I wish I were a robin, a robin or a little wren everywhere to go, through forest field or garden, and ask no leave or pardon, to winter comes with icy thumbs to ruffle up our wing. Well, tell, where should I fly to? Where to go to sleep in the dark wood or dell? Before a day was over, here comes the rover, for mother's kiss sweeter this than any other thing. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Bunches of Grapes by Walter Rammel Read for LibriVox.org by recording person. Bunches of Grapes Bunches of Grapes, says Timothy. Pomegranates pink, says Elaine. A chunk of cream and a cranberry tart for me, says Jane. Love in a mist, says Timothy. Primrose is pale, says Elaine. A nosegay of pinks and a mignonette for me, says Jane. Chariots of gold, says Timothy. Silvery wings, says Elaine. A pomacy ride on a wagon of hay for me, says Jane. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Contentment by Eugene Field, read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Once on a time an old red hen went strutting round with pompous clucks, for she had little babies ten, a part of which were tiny ducks. "'Tis very rare that hens," said she, "'have baby ducks as well as chicks, but I possess, as you can see, of chickens four, and ducklings six. A season later this old hen appeared, still cackling of her luck, for though she boasted babies ten, not one among them was a duck. "'Tis well," she murmured, brooding o'er the little chicks of fleecy down. "'My babies now will stay ashore and consequently cannot drown. The following spring the old red hen clucked just as proudly as of yore, but lo, her babes were ducklings ten, instead of chickens as before. "'Tis better,' said the old red hen, as she surveyed her waddling brood, "'a little water now and then will surely do my darlings good. But, oh, alas, how very sad, when gentle spring rolled round again, the eggs eventuated bad, and childless was the old red hen. Yet patiently she bore her woe, and still she wore a cheerful air, and said, "'Tis best these things are so, for babies are a dreadful care. I have suspect that many men and many, many women, too, could learn a lesson from the hen with plumage of vermilion hue. She ne'er presumed to take offence at any fate that might befall, but meekly bowed to providence. She was contented. That was all. And the poem, this recording is in the public domain. The Land of Storybooks by R. L. Stevenson Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir At evening, when the lamp is lit, around the fire my parents sit. They sit at home and talk and sing and do not play at anything. 
Now, with my little gun, I crawl all in the dark along the wall and follow round the forest track away behind the sofa back. There in the night, where none can spy, all in my hunter's camp I lie and play at books that I have read till it is time to go to bed. These are the hills, these are the woods, these are my starry solitudes, and there are the river by whose brink the roaring lions come to drink. I see the others far away, as if in firelight camp they lay, and I, like to an Indian scout, around their party prowled about. So when my nurse comes in for me, home I return across the sea, and go to bed with backward looks at my dear land of story books. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sandcastles by W. Graham Robertson. Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schampf. Build me a castle of sand down by the sea. Here on the edge of the strand, build it for me. How shall a foeman invade? Where may he land? While we can raise with our spade castles of sand. Turrets upleap and aspire, battlements rise, sweeping the sea with their fire, storming the skies. Pile that a monarch might own, mightily planned. I can't sit here on a throne. This is too grand. Build me a cottage of sand up on the hill. Snug in a cleft it must stand, sunny and still. Plant it with ragwort and ling, bramble and bine. Castles I'll leave to the king. This shall be mine. Storm clouds drive over the land. High flies the spray. Gone are our houses of sand, vanished away. Look at the damage you've done, sea wave and rain. Nay, we but give you your fun over again. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ring of Roses by W. Graham Robertson. Read for LibriVox.org. By Damla Ozdemir. Hush a while, my darling, for the long day closes, nodding into slumber on the blue hill's crest. See the little clouds play ring a ring of roses, planting fairy gardens in the red rose west. Greet him for us, cloudlets, say we're not forgetting golden gifts of sunshine, merry hours of play. Ring a ring of roses round the sweet sun's setting, spread a bed of roses. For the dear dead day. Hush a bye, my little one, the dear day dozes, doffed his crown of kingship and his fair flag furled, while the earth and sky play ring a ring of roses, ring a ring of roses round the rose red world. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod by Eugene Field. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod one night sailed off in a wooden shoe, sailed on a river of crystal light into a sea of dew. Where are you going and what do you wish? the old moon asked the three. We have come to fish for the herring fish that live in this beautiful sea. Nets of silver and gold have we, said Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod. The old moon laughed and sang a song as they rocked in the wooden shoe, and the wind that sped them all night long ruffled the waves of dew. The little stars were the herring fish that lived in that beautiful sea. Now cast your nets wherever you wish, never afeard are we. So cried the stars to the fishermen three, Winkin, Blinkin, and Nod. All night long their nets they threw to the stars in the twinkling foam. Then down from the skies came the wooden shoe, bringing the fishermen home. Twas all so pretty a sail it seemed as if it could not be. And some folks thought twas a dream they dreamed of sailing that beautiful sea. 
but I shall name you the fishermen three, Winken, Blinken, and Nod. Winken and Blinken are two little eyes, and Nod is a little head, and the wooden shoe that sailed the skies is a wee one's trundle bed. So shut your eyes while mother sings of wonderful sights that be, and you shall see the beautiful things as you rock in the misty sea where the old shoe rocked the fishermen three. Winken, Blinken, and Nod. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Drummer Boy and the Shepherdess by W. B. Rands. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Drummer boy, drummer boy, where is your drum? And why do you weep sitting here on your thumb? The soldiers are out, and the fifes we can hear. But where is the drum of the young grenadier? My dear little drum, it was stolen away whilst I was asleep on a sunshiny day. It was all through the drone of a big bumblebee and sheep and a shepherdess under a tree shepherdess shepherdess where is your crook and why is your little lamb over the brook it bleats for its dam and dog tray is not by so why do you stand with a tear in your eye my dear little crook it was stolen away whilst i dreamt the dream on a morning in may it was all through the drone of a big bumblebee and a drum and a drummer boy under a tree and the poem this recording is in the public domain the land of dreams by william blake read for librivox dot org by leonard wilson of springfield ohio awake awake my little boy Thou wast thy mother's only joy. Why dost thou weep in thy gentle sleep? O oh, wake, thy father doth thee keep. O oh, what land is the land of dreams? What are its mountains, and what are its streams? O oh, father, I saw my mother there Among the lilies by waters fair. Dear child, I also by pleasant streams Have wandered all night in the land of dreams. But though calm and warm the waters wide, I could not get to the other side. Father, oh father, what do we here In this land of unbelief and fear? The land of dreams is better far Above the light of the morning star. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sweet and Low by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Sweet and Low, Sweet and Low wind of the western sea blow blow breathe and blow wind of the western sea over the rolling waters go Come from the dying moon and blow, blow him again to me. While my little one, while my pretty one sleeps, sleep and rest sleep and rest father will come to thee soon rest rest on mother's breast father will come to thee soon 
father will come to his babe in the nest silver sails all out of the west under the silver moon sleep my little one sleep my pretty one sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain cradle song by sir walter scott read for LibriVox.org by leonard wilson of springfield ohio O oh, hush thee, my baby, thy sire was a knight, thy mother a lady, both lovely and bright. The woods and the glens, from the towers which we see, they all are belonging, dear baby, to thee. O oh, fear not the bugle, though loudly it blows, it calls but the warders that guard thy repose their bows would be bended their blades would be red ere the step of a foeman draws near to thy bed oh hush thee my baby the time will soon come when thy sleep shall be broken by trumpet and drum then hush thee my darling take rest while you may for strife comes with manhood and waking with day and a poem this recording is in the public domain my mother and i by eugene field read for librivox dot org by leonard wilson of springfield ohio oh mother my love if you'll give me your hand and go where i ask you to wander i will lead you away to a beautiful land the dreamland that's waiting out yonder we'll walk in a sweet posy garden out there where moonlight and starlight are streaming and the flowers and the birds are filling the air with the fragrance and music of dreaming there'll be no little tired-out boy to undress no questions or cares to perplex you there'll be no little bruises or bumps to caress nor patching of stockings to vex you for i'll rock you away on a silver dew stream and sing you asleep when you're weary and no one shall know of our beautiful dream but you and your own little dearie and when i am tired i'll nestle my head in the bosom that soothed me so often and the wide-awake stars shall sing in my stead a song which our dreaming shall soften so mother my love let me take your dear hand and away through the starlight we'll wander away through the mist to the beautiful land the dreamland that's waiting out yonder. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fairies by William Ellingham. Read for the .org. Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, we daren't go a hunting for fear of little men we folk good folk trooping all together green jacket red cap and white owl's feather down along the rocky shore some make their home they live on crispy pancakes of yellow tide foam some in the reeds of the black mountain lake with frogs for their watchdogs all night awake high up on the hilltop the old king sits he is now so old and gray He's nigh lost his wits. With a bridge of white mist, Columkill he crosses, On his stately journeys, From sleeve league to roses, Or going up with music, On cold starry nights, To sup with the queen, Of the gay northern lights. They stole little Bridget, For seven years long, When she came down again, Her friends were all gone. They took her lightly back, 
between the night and morrow they thought that she was fast asleep but she was dead with sorrow they have kept her ever since deep within the lakes on a bed of flag leaves watching till she wakes by the craggy hillside through the mosses bare they have planted thorn trees for pleasure here and there is any man so daring as dig one up in spite he shall find their sharpest thorns in his bed at night up the airy mountain down the rushy glen we daren't go a-hunting for fear of little men we folk good folk trooping all together green jacket red cap and white owl's feather end of poem this recording is in the public domain shakespeare's fairies by shakespeare read for the bravox.org some of them ye elves of hills brooks standing lakes and groves and ye that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing neptune and do fly him when he comes back you demi puppets that by moonshine do the green sour ringlets make whereof the ooh not bites, and you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew. They dance and play. Come unto these yellow sands, and then take hands, curtsied when you have and kissed the wild waves whist, foot it featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burden bear, Hark, hark, bow, wow, the watchdogs bark. Bow, wow, hark, hark, I hear the strain of strutting chanticleer. Cry, cock-a-doodle-doe. Ariel sings. Where the bee sucks, there suck I, and a cowslip bell I lie. There I couch when owls do cry. On the bat's back I do fly. After summer merrily, merrily merrily shall i live now under the blossom that hangs on the bough a busy one over hill over dale thorough bush thorough briar over park over pale thorough flood thorough fire i do wander everywhere swifter than the moon's sphere and i serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green, the cowslips tall, her pensioners be, and their gold coats spot you see. Those be rubies, fairy favors, in those freckles live their savors. I must go seek some dewdrops here, and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. They sing their queen to sleep. You spotted snakes with double tongue thorny hedgehogs be not seen newts and blindworms do no wrong come not near our fairy queen philomel with melody sing in our sweet lullaby lulla lulla lullaby lulla lulla lullaby never harm nor spell nor charm come our lovely lady nigh so good night with lullaby weaving spiders come not here hence you long-legged spinners hence beetles black approach not near worm nor snail do no offence philomel with melody sing in our sweet lullaby lulla lulla lullaby lulla lulla lullaby never harm nor spell nor charm come our lovely lady nigh so good night with lullaby Footnote, Demi Puppets, half the size of a doll. Whist, silent. Featly, neatly, elegantly. Orbs, circles, or fairy rings. End footnote. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lavender Beds by W. B. Rands read for LibriVox.org. The garden was pleasant with old-fashioned flowers, 
the sunflowers and hollyhocks stood up like towers there were dark turncap lilies and jessamine rare and sweet thyme and marjoram scented the air the moon made the sun dial tell the time wrong twas too late in the year for the nightingale song the box trees were clipped and the alleys were straight till you came to the shrubbery hard by the gate the fairy stepped out of the lavender beds with mob caps or wigs on their quaint little heads my lord had a sword and my lady a fan the music struck up and the dancing began i watched them go through with a grave minuet wherever they footed the dew was not wet they bowed and they curtsied the brave and the fair and laughter like chirping of crickets was there then all on a sudden a church clock struck loud a flutter a shiver was seen in the crowd the cock crew the wind woke the trees tossed their heads and the fairy folk hid in the lavender beds end of poem this recording is in the public domain farewell to the fairies by richard corbett read for LibriVox.org. farewell rewards and fairies good housewives now may say for now foul sluts and diaries do fare as well as they and though they sweep their hearths no less than maids were wont to do yet who of late for cleanliness finds sixpence in her shoe at morning and at evening both you merry were and glad so little care of sleep or sloth those pretty ladies had when tom came home from labor or cis to milking rose then merrily went their tabor and nibbly went their toes witness those rings and roundelays of theirs which yet remain were footed in queen mary's days on many a grassy plain but since of late elizabeth and later james came in they never dance on any heath and when the time hath been by which we note the fairies were of the old profession their songs were of ave marie's their dances were a procession but now alas they all are dead or gone beyond the seas or farther for religion fled or else they take their ease a tell-tale in their company they never could endure and whoso kept not secretly their mirth was punished sure it was a just and christian deed to pinch such black and blue oh how the commonwealth doth need such justices as you end of poem this recording is in the public domain dirge on the death of oberon the Fairy King by G. W. Thornberry Read for LibriVox.org Toll the lily's silver bells, Oberon, the king, is dead. In her grief the crimson rose, All her velvet leaves has shed. Toll the lily's silver bells, Oberon is dead and gone. He who looked an emperor, When his glow-worn crown was on, Toll the lily's silver bells, Slay the dragonfly, his steed. Dig his grave within the ring of mushrooms in the mead. But he wasn't dead, really. It was all a mistake. So they didn't slay the dragonfly after all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kilmeny by James Hogg. Read for LibriVox.org. A story about one who went there. Bonnie Kilmeny gaed up the glen, but it wasn't not to meet Denira's men, nor the rosy monk of the isle to see, for Kilmeny was pure as pure could be. It was only to hear the yorlin sing, and pull the blue crest flower round the spring, to pull the hip and the hindberry, and the nut that hung fray the hazel tree. For Kilmeny was pure as pure could be, but Lang may her minnie look o'er the wa, and Lang may she see in the greenwood shaw, 
Lang the laird or dinere blame, and lang, lang greet, ere Kilmeny come hame. Then many a day had come and fled, when grief grew calm and hope was dead, when mass for Kilmeny's soul had been sung, when the bedsman had prayed and the dead bell rung, late, late in the gloaming, when all was still, when the fringe was red on the westland hill, the wood was sere, the moon i' the wane, the reek of the cot hung o'er the plain, like a little wee cloud in the world's its lane, when the ingle lowed with an eerie gleam, late, late in the gloamin', Kilmeny came hame. Kilmeny, Kilmeny, where have you been? Lang hay we sought, baith holt and dean, by lynn, by ford, by greenwood tree. Yet you are halesome and fair to see. What gate you that joop of lily sheen, that bonny snood of the birk say green, and these roses, the fairest that were ever seen? Kilmeny, Kilmeny, where have you been? Kilmeny looked up with a lovely grace, but nay smile was seen on Kilmeny's face, as the still was her look, and as still was her e, as the stillness that lay on the emerald lee, or the mist that sleeps on the waveless sea. For Kilmeny had been she knew not where, and Kilmeny had seen what she could not declare. Kilmeny had been where the cock never crew, where the rain never fell, and the wind never blew. But it seemed as the harp of the sky had rung, and the airs of heavenly played round her tongue, when she spake of the lovely form she had seen, and a land where sin had never been, a land of love, and a land of light, without in sun, or moon, or night, the land of vision, it would seem, and still an everlasting dream. They lifted Kilmeny, they led her away, and she walked in the light of a sunless day. The sky was a dome of crystal bright, the fountain of vision and fountain of light. The emerald fields were of dazzling glow, and the flowers of everlasting blow. Then deep in the stream her body they laid, that her youth and beauty might never fade and they smiled on heaven when they saw her lie in the stream of life that wandered by and she heard a song she heard it sung she kinned not where but so sweetly it rung it fell on the ear like a dream of the morn o blessed be the day kilmeny was born to sing of the sights kilmeny saw so far surpassing nature's law the singer's voice would sink away, and the string of his harp would cease to play. But she saw till the sorrows of man were by, and all was love and harmony, till the stars of heaven fell calmly away, like the flakes of snow on a winter day. When seven lang years had come and fled, when grief was calm and hope was dead, when scarce was remembered Kilmeny's name, late, late in a gloaming Kilmeny came hame, and oh her beauty was fair to see but still and steadfast was her e her simar was the lily flower and her cheek the moss rose in the shower and her voice like the distant melody that floats along the twilight sea but she loved to rake the lanely glen and keep it away frae the haunts of men her holy hymns unheard to sing to suck the flowers and drink the spring but wherever her peaceful form appeared the wild beasts of the hill were cheered the wolf played blithely round the field the lordly bison lowed and kneeled the dun deer wooed with manner bland and cowered aneath her lily hand and all in a peaceful ring were hurled it was like an eve in a sinless world when a mouth and a day had come and gain, Kilmeny sought the greenwood ween. There laid her down on the leaves say green, and Kilmeny on earth was never mare seen. Footnote Gade, Went, Yorlin, Yellowhammer, Hindberry, 
wild raspberry minnie mother greet weep westland western reek smoke is lane alone ingle fire load flamed lynn waterfall jupe bodice snood hair ribbon birk birch seamar a late robe rake wander through and footnote end of poem this recording is in the public domain a boy song by james hogg read for librivox.org by recording person a boy song where the pools are bright and deep where the gray trout lies asleep up the river and over the lee that's the way for billy and me where the blackbird sings the latest where the hawthorn blooms the sweetest where the nestlings chirp and flee that's the way for billy and me where the mowers mow the cleanest where the hay lies thick and greenest there to track the homeward bee that's the way for billy and me where the hazel bank is steepest where the shadow falls the deepest where the clustering nuts fall free that's the way for billy and me why the boys should drive away little sweet maidens from the play will love to banter and fight so well that's the thing i never could tell but this i know i love to play through the meadow among the hay up the water and over the lea that's the way for billy and me end of poem this recording is in the public domain a girl's song by thomas moore read for librivox.org by recording person a girl's song there's a bower of roses by bendemere stream and the nightingale sings round it all the day long in the time of my childhood Twas like a sweet dream to sit in the roses and hear the bird's song. That bower and its music I never forget, but oft when alone in the bloom of the year, I think, is the nightingale singing there yet? Are the roses still bright by the calm bend of mere? No, the roses soon withered that hung over the wave, but some blossoms were gathered while freshly they shone, and a dew was distilled from their flowers that gave all the fragrance of summer when summer was gone. Thus memory draws from delight, ere it dies, an essence that breathes of it many a year, thus bright to my soul, as t'was then to my eyes, is that bower on the banks of the calm Bendemere. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Three Things to Remember by William Blake, read for LibriVox.org, by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. A robin redbreast in a cage puts all heaven in a rage. A skylark wounded on the wing doth make a cherub cease to sing. He who shall hurt the little wren shall never be beloved by men and a poem this recording is in the public domain the night of bethlehem by h n mom read for librivox dot org by leonard wilson of springfield ohio there was a night of bethlehem whose wealth was tears and sorrows his men-at-arms were little lambs his trumpeters were sparrows his castle was a wooden cross on which he hung so high his helmet was a crown of thorns whose crest did touch the sky and a poem this recording is in the public domain The Lamb by William Blake Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio Little Lamb, who made thee? Dost thou know who made thee? 
gave thee life and bade thee feed by the stream and o'er the mead gave thee clothing of delight softest clothing woolly bright gave thee such a tender voice making all the vales rejoice little lamb who made thee dost thou know who made thee little lamb i'll tell thee little lamb i'll tell thee he is called by thy name for he calls himself a lamb he is meek and he is mild he became a little child i a child and thou a lamb we are called by his name little lamb god bless thee little lamb god bless thee and a poem this recording is in the public domain the tiger by william blake read by lynn thompson tiger tiger burning bright in the forest of the night what immortal hand or eye framed thy fearful symmetry in what distant deeps or skies burned that fire within thine eyes on what wings dared he aspire what the hand dared seize the fire and what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart when thy heart began to beat what dread hand formed thy dread feet what the hammer what the chain knit thy strength and forged thy brain what the anvil what dead grasp dared thy deadly terrors clasp when the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears did he smile his work to see did he who made the lamb make thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain I Had a Dove by John Keats Read for LibriVox.org by Damla Ozdemir I had a dove, and the sweet dove died, and I have thought it died of grieving. Oh, what could it grieve for? Its feet were tied with a silken thread of my own hands weaving. Sweet little red feet, why should you die? Why would you leave me, sweet bird, why? You lived alone in the forest tree, why, pretty thing, would you not live with me? I kissed you oft and gave you white peas. Why not live sweetly as in the green trees? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Robin Redbreast by William Allingham Read for LibriVox by Victoria Kahn Goodbye, goodbye to summer, for summer's nearly done. The garden smiling faintly, cool breezes in the sun. Our thrushes now are silent, our swallows flown away. But robin's here in coat of brown, and scarlet breast not gay. Robin, robin, red breast, oh robin dear. Robin sings so sweetly in the falling of the year. Bright yellow, red, and orange, the leaves come down in hosts. The trees are Indian princes, but soon they'll turn to ghosts. The leathery pears and apples hang russet on the bough. It's autumn, autumn, autumn late. Twill soon be winter now. Robin, robin, redbreast, oh, robin dear. And what will this poor robin do? For pinching days are near. The fireside for the cricket the wheat stack for the mouse when trembling night winds whistle and moan all round the house the frosty ways like iron the branches plumed with snow alas in winter dead and dark where can poor robin go robin robin redbreast oh robin dear and a crumb of bread for robin his little heart to cheer end of poem this recording is in the public domain.
Black Bunny by W. B. Renz. Read for LibriVox by Victoria Kahn. It was a black bunny with white on its head, alive when the children went cozy to bed. Oh, early next morning, that bunny was dead. When Bunny's young master awoke from his sleep, to look at the creature's young master did creep, and saw that this black one lay all of a heap. Oh, Bunny, what ails you? What does it import that you lean on one side with your breath coming short? For I never before saw a thing of the sort. They took him so gently up out of his hutch. They made him a sick bed. They loved him so much. They wrapped him up warm. They said, poor thing and such. But all to no purpose. Black Bunny, he died. And rolled over limp on his little black side. The grown-up spectators looked awkward and sighed, while, as for those others in that congregation, you heard voices lifted in sore lamentation. But three-year-old baby desired explanation, at least so it seemed. Then they buried their dead in a nice quiet place, with a flag at his head. Poor Bunny, in large print, was what the flag said. Now, as they were shoveling the earth in the hole, little baby burst out, I don't like it, poor soul, and bitterly wept. So the dead had his dole. That evening, as babe, she was cuddling to bed. The bunny will come back again, baby said, and be a white bunny, and never be dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cow by Anne and Jane Taylor Read for LibriVox.org by Phil Schempf Thank you, pretty cow, that made pleasant milk to soak my bread, Every day and every night, warm and fresh and sweet and white. Do not chew the hemlock rank growing on the weedy bank, But the yellow cowslips eat, they will make it very sweet. Where the purple violet grows, where the bubbling water flows, Where the grass is fresh and fine, Pretty cow, go there and dine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Skylark by James Hogg Read for LibriVox by Victoria Kahn Bird of the wilderness, blithesome and cumberless, Sweet be thy matin o'er moorland and lea, Emblem of happiness, blessed is thy dwelling place, O oh, to abide in the desert with thee. Wild is thy lay and loud far in the downy cloud, Love gives it energy, love gave it birth. Where on thy dewy wing, where art thou journeying? Thy lay is in heaven, thy love is on earth. O'er fell and fountain sheen, o'er moor and mountain green, O'er the red streamer that heralds the day, or the cloudlet dim, or the rainbow's rim, musical cherub soar singing away. Then, when the gloaming comes, low in the heather blooms, sweet will thy welcome and bed of love be. Emblem of happiness, blessed is thy dwelling place. O oh, to abide in the desert with thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Christmas Eve by John Davidson Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Christmas Eve In holly hedges starving birds Silently mourn the setting year. Upright like silver-plated swords, The flags stand in the frozen mere. The mistletoe we still adore Upon the twisted hawthorn grows, In antique gardens hellebore Puts forth its blushing Christmas rose shrivelled and purple cheek by jowl the hips and haws hang drearily rolled in a ball the sulky owl creeps far into his hollow tree in abbeys and cathedrals dim the birth of christ is acted o'er the kings of cologne worship him balthazar jasper melchior 
the shepherds in the field at night beheld an angel glory clad and shrank away with sore affright be not afraid the angel bade i bring good news to king and clown to you here crouching on the sward for there is born in david's town a saviour which is christ the lord behold the babe is swathed and laid within a manger straight there stood beside the angel all arrayed a heavenly multitude glory to god they sang and peace good pleasure among men the wondrous message of release glory to god again hush hark the waits far up the street a distant ghostly charm unfolds of magic music wild and sweet a gnomes and clara golds john davidson end of poem this recording is in the public domain a christmas carol by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by betty b a christmas carol what sweeter music can we bring than a carol for to sing the birth of this our heavenly king awake the voice awake the stream heart ear and eye everything dark and dull night fly hence away and give the honour to this day that sees december turn to may if we may ask the reason say the why and wherefore all things here seem like the springtime of the year why does the chilling winter's morn smile like a field beset with corn or smell like to a mead new shorn thus on the sudden come and see the cause why things thus fragrant be tis he is born whose quickening birth gives light and lustre public mirth to heaven and the under earth we see him come and know him ours who with his sunshine and his showers turns all the patient ground to flowers the darling of the world is come and fit it is we find a room to welcome him the nobler part of all the house here is the heart which we will give him and bequeath this holly and this ivy wreath to do him honour who's our king and lord of all this revelling robert herrick end of poem this recording is in the public domain a child's present to his child saviour by robert herrick read for librivox dot org by betty b a child's present to his child saviour go pretty child and bear this flower unto thy little saviour and tell him by that bud now blown he is the rose of sharon known when thou hast said so stick it here upon his bib or stomacher and tell him for good hansel too that thou hast brought a whistle new made of a clean straight oaten reed to charm his cries at time of need tell him for coral thou hast none but if thou hadst he should have one but poor thou art and known to be even as moneyless as he lastly if thou canst win a kiss from these mellifluous lips of his then never take a second on to spoil the first impression robert herrick end of poem this recording is in the public domain the peace giver by a c swinburne read for librivox by victoria khan thou whose birth on earth angels sang to men while thy stars made mirth saviour at thy birth this day born again as this night was bright with thy cradle ray very light of light turn the wild world's night to thy perfect day thou the word and lord in all time and space heard beheld adored with all ages poured forth before thy face lord what worth in earth drew thee down to die what therein was worth lord thy death and birth what beneath thy sky thou whose face gives grace as the sun's doth heat let thy sun-bright face lighten time and space 
here beneath thy feet. Bid our peace increase, thou that madest mourn. Bid oppression cease, bid the night be peace, bid the day be born. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Singer by P. B. Shelley Read for LibriVox by Vittoria Khan My soul is an enchanted boat, which, like a sleeping swan, doth float upon the silver waves of thy sweet singing, and thine doth like an angel sit beside the helm conducting it, whilst all the winds with melody are ringing, it seems to float ever for ever upon that many winding river, between mountains, woods, abysses, a paradise of wildernesses, till like one in slumber bound, born to the ocean, I float down around into a sea profound of ever-spreading sound. Meanwhile thy spirit lifts its pinions in music's most serene dominions, catching the winds that fan that happy heaven, and we sail on, away, afar, without a course, without a star. But by the instinct of sweet music driven, till through Elysian garden islets, by thee most beautiful of pilots, where never mortal pinnace glided, the boat of my desire is guided, realms where the air we breathe is love, which in the winds on the waves doth move, harmonizing this earth with what we feel above. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Happy Piper by William Blake Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio Piping down the valleys wild Piping songs of pleasant glee, on a cloud I saw a child, and he laughing said to me, Pipe a song about a lamb. So I piped with merry cheer, Piper, pipe that song again. So I piped, he wept to hear, Drop thy pipe, thy happy pipe, sing thy songs of happy cheer. So I sang the same again while he wept with joy to hear. Piper, sit thee down and write in a book that all may read. So he vanished from my sight, and I plucked a hollow reed, and I made a rural pen, and I stained the water clear, and I wrote my happy songs every child may joy to hear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Destruction of Sennacherib by Lord Byron Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio The Assyrian came down like a wolf on the fold, And his cohorts were gleaming in purple and gold and the sheen of their spears was like stars on the sea when the blue wave rolls nightly on deep galilee like the leaves of the forest when summer is green that host with their banners at sunset were seen like the leaves of the forest when autumn hath blown that host on the morrow lay withered and strown for the angel of death spread his wings on the blast and breathed in the face of the foe as he passed and the eyes of the sleepers waxed deadly and chill and their hearts but once heaved and for ever grew still and there lay the steed with his nostril all wide but through it there rolled not the breath of his pride and the foam of his gasping lay white on the turf and cold as the spray of the rock-beating surf and there lay the rider distorted and pale 
with the dew on his brow and the rust on his mail and the tents were all silent the banners alone the lances unlifted the trumpet unblown and the widows of asher are loud in their wail and the idols are broke in the temple of baal and the might of the gentile unsmote by the sword hath melted like snow in the glance of the lord and a poem this recording is in the public domain sheridan's ride by thomas buchanan reed read for librivox by vittoria khan up from the south at break of day bringing to winchester fresh dismay the affrighted air with a shudder bore like a herald in haste to the chieftain's door the terrible grumble and rumble and roar telling the battle was on once more and sheridan twenty miles away and wilder still those billows of war thundered along the horizon's bar and louder yet into winchester rolled the roar of that red sea uncontrolled making the blood of the listener cold as he thought of the stake in that fiery fray with sheridan twenty miles away but there is a road from winchester town a good broad highway leading down and there through the flash of the morning light a steed as black as the steeds of night was seen to pass as with eagle flight as if he knew the terrible need he stretched away with his utmost speed heels rose and fell but his heart was gay with sheridan fifteen miles away still sprang from those swift hoofs thundering south the dust like the smoke from the cannon's mouth or the trail of a comet sweeping faster and faster foreboding to traitors the doom of disaster the heart of the steed and the heart of the master were beating like prisoners assaulting their walls impatient to be where the battlefield calls every nerve of the charger was strained to full play with sheridan only ten miles away the first that the general saw was the groups of stragglers and then the retreating troops what was done what to do a glance told them both and striking his spurs with a terrible oath he dashed down the line mid a storm of huzzas and the wave of retreat checked its course there because the sight of the master compelled it to pause with foam and with dust the black charger was gray by the flash of his eye and his red nostrils play he seemed to the whole great army to say i have brought you sheridan all the way from winchester town to save the day hurrah hurrah for sheridan hurrah hurrah for horse and man and when their statues are placed on high under the dome of the union sky the american soldier's temple of fame there with the glorious general's name be it said in letters both bold and bright here is the steed that saved the day by carrying sheridan into the fight from winchester twenty miles away end of poem this recording is in the public domain columbus by joaquin miller read for librivox dot org by phil Schampf. behind him lay the gray azores behind the gates of hercules before him not the ghost of shores before him only shoreless seas the good mate said now we must pray for lo the very stars are gone brave admiral speak what shall i say why say sail on sail on and on my men grow mutinous day by day my men grow ghastly wan and weak the stout mate thought of home a spray of salt wave washed his swarthy cheek what shall i say brave admiral say if we sight not but seize at dawn why you should say at break of day sail on sail on sail on and on they sailed and sailed as winds might blow until at last the blanched mate said why 
now not even god would know should i and all my men fall dead these very winds forget their way for god from these dread seas is gone now speak brave admiral speak and say he said sail on sail on and on they sailed they sailed then spake the mate this mad sea shows his teeth to-night he curls his lip he lies in wait he lifts his teeth as if to bite brave admiral say but one good word what shall we do when hope is gone the words leapt like a leaping sword sail on sail on sail on and on then pale and worn he paced his deck and peered through darkness ah that night of all dark nights and then a speck a light a light at last a light it grew a starlit flag unfurled it grew to be time's burst of dawn he gained a world he gave that world its grandest lesson on sail on end of poem this recording is in the public domain horatius by lord macaulay read for LibriVox.org by leonard wilson of springfield ohio macaulay's lays of ancient rome of which this is the first deal only with the legends that rome in her greatness liked to tell concerning her early beginnings unfortunately there is no similar group of poems treating of imperial rome the centre of a world empire but children must please not think of the mistress of the world purely as a little riverside town which could free itself from outside trouble by chopping down a wooden bridge horatius lars porcina of clusium by the nine gods he swore that the great house of tarquin should suffer wrong no more by the nine gods he swore it and named a trysting day and bade his messengers ride forth east and west and south and north to summon his array east and west and south and north the messengers ride fast and tower and town and cottage have heard the trumpets blast shame on the false etruscan who lingers in his home when porcina of clusium is on the march for rome the horsemen and the footmen are pouring in amain from many a stately market-place from many a fruitful plain from many a lonely hamlet which hid by beech and pine like an eagle's nest hangs on the crest a purple apennine from lordly Volatere, where scowls the far-famed hold, piled by the hands of giants for godlike kings of old, from sea-girt Populonia, whose sentinels descry Sardinia's snowy mountain tops fringing the southern sky, from the proud Marta Pisa, queen of the western waves, where ride Massilia's triremes heavy with fair-haired slaves from where sweet clannis wanders through corn and vines and flowers from where cortona lifts to heaven her diadem of towers tall are the oaks whose acorns drop in dark osser's rill fat are the stags that champ the boughs of the simenian hill beyond all streams clitumnus is to the herdsman dear best of all pools the fowler loves the great volsinian mere but now no stroke of woodman is heard by osser's rill no hunter tracks the stag's green path up the simenian hill unwatched along clitumnus grazes the milk-white steer unharmed the waterfowl may dip in the volsinian mirror the harvests of Arichum this year old men shall reap this year young boys in umbro shall plunge the struggling sheep 
and in the vats of luna this year the must shall foam round the white feet of laughing girls whose sires have marched to rome there be thirty chosen prophets the wisest of the land who always by lars porcina both morn and evening stand evening and morn the thirty have turned the verses o'er traced from the right on linen white by mighty seers of yore and with one voice the thirty have their glad answer given go forth go forth lars porcina go forth beloved of heaven go and return in glory to clusium's royal dome and hang round nurtia's altars the golden shields of rome and now hath every city sent up her tale of men the foot are fourscore thousand the horse are thousands ten before the gates of sutrium is met the great array a proud man was lars porcina upon the trysting day for all the etruscan armies were ranged beneath his eye and many a banished roman and many a stout ally and with a mighty following to join the muster came the tusculan mamilius prince of the latian name but by the yellow tiber was tumult and affright from all the spacious champaign to rome men took their flight a mile around the city the throng stopped up the ways a fearful sight it was to see through two long nights and days for aged folk on crutches and women great with child and mothers sobbing over babes that clung to them and smiled and sick men born in litters high on the necks of slaves and troops of sunburned husbandmen with reaping hooks and staves and droves of mules and asses laden with skins of wine and endless flocks of goats and sheep and endless herds of kine and endless trains of wagons that creaked beneath the weight of corn sacks and of household goods choke every roaring gate now from the rock tarpeian could the wan burgher spy the line of blazing villages red in the midnight sky the fathers of the city they sat all night and day for every hour some horsemen came with tidings of dismay to eastward and to westward have spread the tuscan bands nor house nor fence nor dovecote and christumerium stands verbenna down to ostia hath wasted all the plain aster hath stormed janiculum and the stout guards are slain i wis in all the senate there was no heart so bold but sore it ached and fast it beat when that ill news was told forthwith up rose the consul up rose the fathers all in haste they girded up their gowns and hide them to the wall they held a council standing before the river gate short time was there ye well may guess for musings or debate out spake the consul roundly the bridge must straight go down for since janiculum is lost naught else can save the town just then a scout came flying all wild with haste and fear to arms to arms sir consul large porcina is here on the low hills to westward the consul fixed his eye and saw the swarthy storm of dust rise fast along the sky and nearer fast and nearer doth the red whirlwind come and louder still and still more loud from underneath that rolling cloud is heard the trumpet's war note proud the trampling and the hum and plainly and more plainly now through the gloom appears far to left and far to right in broken gleams of dark blue light the long array of helmets bright the long array of spears 
and plainly and more plainly above that glimmering line now might she see the banners of twelve fair cities shine but the banner of proud clusium was highest of them all the terror of the umbrian the terror of the gaul and plainly and more plainly now might the burghers know by port and vest by horse and crest each warlike lucumo there silnius of aricium on his fleet roan was seen an aster of the fourfold shield girt with the brand none else may wield tolumnius with the belt of gold and dark verbena from the hold by reedy thrasymene fast by the royal standard or looking all the war lars porcina of clusium sat in his ivory car by the right wheel rode mamilius prince of the latian name and by the left false sextus that wrought the deed of shame but when the face of sextus was seen among the foes a yell that rent the firmament from all the town arose on the housetops was no woman but spat towards him and hissed no child but screamed out curses and shook its little fist but the consul's brow was sad and the consul's speech was low and darkly looked he at the wall and darkly at the foe the van will be upon us before the bridge goes down and if they once may win the bridge what hope to save the town then out spake brave horatius the captain of the gate to every man upon this earth death cometh soon or late and how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods and for the tender mother who dandled him to rest and for the wife who nurses his baby at her breast and for the holy maidens who feed the eternal flame to save them from false sextus that wrought the deed of shame hew down the bridge sir consul with all the speed ye may i with two more to help me will hold the foe in play in yon straight path a thousand may well be stopped by three now who will stand on either hand and keep the bridge with me then out spake spurius Lartius, a romnian proud was he lo i will stand at thy right hand and keep the bridge with thee and out spake strong hermenius of titian blood was he i will ride on thy left side and keep the bridge with thee horatius quoth the consul as thou sayest so let it be and straight against that great array forth went the dauntless three for romans in rome's quarrel spared neither land nor gold nor son nor wife nor limb nor life in the brave days of old then none was for a party then all were for the state then the great man helped the poor and the poor man loved the great then lands were fairly portioned then spoils were fairly sold the romans were like brothers in the brave days of old now roman is to roman more hateful than a foe and the tribunes beard the high and the fathers grind the low as we wax hot in faction in battle we wax cold wherefore men fight not as they fought in the brave days of old now while the three were tightening their harness on their backs the consul was the foremost man to take in hand an axe and fathers mixed with commons seized hatchet bar and crow and smote upon the planks above and loosed the props below meanwhile the tuscan army right glorious to behold came flashing back the noonday light rank behind rank like surges bright of a broad sea of gold four hundred trumpets sounded a peal of warlike glee as that great host with measured tread and spears advanced and ensigns spread 
rolled slowly towards the bridge's head where stood the dauntless three the three stood calm and silent and looked upon the foes and a great shout of laughter from all the vanguard rose and forth three chiefs came spurring before that deep array to earth they sprang their swords they drew and lifted high their shields and flew to win the narrow way onus from green tifernum lord of the hill of vines and Saeus, whose eight hundred slaves sicken in ilva's mines and picus long to clusium vassal in peace and war who led to fight his umbrian powers from that gray crag where girt with towers the fortress of nequinum lowers o'er the pale waves of nar stout Larcius hurled down on us into the stream beneath hermenius struck at Saeus and clove him to the teeth at picus brave horatius darted one fiery thrust and the proud umbrian's gilded arms clashed in the bloody dust then ochnus of Falerii rushed on the roman three and Lausulus of Ergo, the rover of the sea, and Aaron's of Volsinium, who slew the great wild boar, the great wild boar that had his den amidst the reeds of Cosa's fen, and wasted fields and slaughtered men along Albinia's shore. Hermenius smote down Aaron's, Lartius laid Ochnus low. Right to the heart of Lausulus, Horatius sent a blow. Lie there, he cried, fell pirate, no more aghast and pale from Ostia's walls, the crowd shall mark the track of thy destroying bark. No more Campania's hinds shall fly to woods and caverns when they spy thy thrice accursed sail. But now no sound of laughter was heard amongst the foes, a wild and wrathful clamour from all the vanguard rose six spears lengths from the entrance halted that deep array and for a space no man came forth to win the narrow way but hark the cry is astor and lo the ranks divide and the great lord of luna comes with his stately stride upon his ample shoulders clangs loud the fourfold shield and in his hand he shakes the brand which none but he can wield he smiled on those bold romans a smile serene and high he eyed the flinching tuscans and scorn was in his eye quoth he the she-wolf's litter stands savagely at bay but will ye dare to follow if astor clears the way then whirling up his broadsword with both hands to the height he rushed against horatius and smote with all his might with shield and blade horatius right deftly turned the blow the blow though turned came yet too nigh it missed his helm but gashed his thigh the tuscans raised a joyful cry to see the red blood flow he reeled and on Herminius he leaned one breathing space, then like a wildcat mad with wounds sprang right at Astor's face. Through teeth and skull and helmet so fierce a thrust he sped, the good sword stood a handbreadth out behind the Tuscan's head. And the great lord of Luna fell at that deadly stroke as falls on Mount Alvernus a thunder-smitten oak far o'er the crashing forest the giant arms lie spread and the pale augurs muttering low gaze on the blasted head on astor's throat horatius right firmly pressed his heel and thrice and four times tugged amain ere he wrenched out the steel and see cried he the welcome fair guest that waits you here what noble lucumo comes next to taste our roman cheer but at his haughty challenge a sullen murmur ran mingled of wrath and shame and dread along that glittering van there lacked not men of prowess nor men of lordly race for all etruria's noblest 
were round the fatal place but all etruria's noblest felt their hearts sink to see on the earth the bloody corpses in the path the dauntless three and from the ghastly entrance where those bold romans stood all shrank like boys who unaware ranging the woods to start a hare come to the mouth of the dark lair where growling low a fierce old bear lies amidst bones and blood was none who would be foremost to lead such dire attack but those behind cried forward and those before cried back and backward now and forward wavers the deep array and on the tossing sea of steel to and fro the standards reel and the victorious trumpet peal dies fitfully away yet one man for one moment strode out before the crowd well known was he to all the three and they gave him greeting loud now welcome welcome sextus now welcome to thy home why dost thou stay and turn away here lies the road to rome thrice looked he at the city thrice looked he at the dead and thrice came on in fury and thrice turned back in dread and white with fear and hatred scowled at the narrow way where wallowing in a pool of blood the bravest tuscans lay but meanwhile axe and lever have manfully been plied and now the bridge hangs tottering above the boiling tide come back come back horatius loud cried the fathers all back Lartius, back herminius back ere the ruin fall back darted spurius Lartius, herminius darted back and as they passed beneath their feet they felt the timbers crack but when they turned their faces and on the farther shore saw brave horatius stand alone they would have crossed once more but with a crash like thunder fell every loosened beam and like a dam the mighty wreck lay right athwart the stream and a long shout of triumph rose from the walls of rome as to the highest turret tops was splashed the yellow foam and like a horse unbroken when first he feels the rein the furious river struggled hard and tossed his tawny mane and burst the curb and bounded rejoicing to be free and whirling down in fierce career battlement and plank and pier rushed headlong to the sea alone stood brave horatius but constant still in mind thrice thirty thousand foes before and the broad flood behind down with him cried false sextus with a smile on his pale face now yield thee cried lars porcina now yield thee to our grace round turned he as not deigning those craven ranks to see naught spake he to lars porcina to sextus naught spake he but he saw on palatinus the white porch of his home and he spake to the noble river that rolls by the towers of rome o tiber father tiber to whom the romans pray a roman's life a roman's arms take thou in charge this day so he spake and speaking sheathed the good sword by his side and with his harness on his back plunged headlong in the tide no sound of joy or sorrow was heard from either bank but friends and foes in dumb surprise with parted lips and straining eyes stood gazing where he sank and when above the surges they saw his crest appear all rome sent forth a rapturous cry and even the ranks of tuscany could scarce forbear to cheer but fiercely ran the current swollen high by months of rain and fast his blood was flowing and he was sore in pain and heavy with his armor and spent with changing blows and oft they thought him sinking but still again he rose 
Never, I ween, did swimmer in such an evil case struggle through such a raging flood, safe to the landing place. But his limbs were borne up bravely by the brave heart within, and our good father Tiber bare bravely up his chin. Curse on him, quoth false Sextus, will not the villain drown? But for this day, ere close of day, we should have sacked the town. Heaven help him, quoth Lars Porsena, and bring him safe to shore, for such a gallant feat of arms was never seen before. And now he feels the bottom, now on dry earth he stands, now round him throng the fathers to press his gory hands, and now with shouts and clapping and noise of weeping loud he enters through the river gate, borne by the joyous crowd. They gave him of the cornland that was of public right as much as two strong oxen could plough from morn till night and they made a molten image and set it up on high and there it stands unto this day to witness if i lie it stands in the commission plain for all folk to see horatius in his harness halting upon one knee and underneath is written in letters all of gold how valiantly he kept the bridge in the brave days of old and still his name sounds stirring unto the men of rome as the trumpet blast that cries to them to charge the volscian home and wives still pray to juno for boys with hearts as bold as his who kept the bridge so well in the brave days of old and in the nights of winter when the cold north winds blow and the long howling of the wolves is heard amidst the snow when round the lonely cottage roars loud the tempest din and the good logs of algidus roar louder yet within when the oldest cask is opened and the largest lamp is lit when the chestnuts glow in the embers and the kid turns on the spit when young and old in circle around the firebrands close when the girls are weaving baskets and the lads are shaping bows when the good man mends his armor and trims his helmet's plume when the good wife's shuttle merrily goes flashing through the loom with weeping and with laughter still is the story told how well horatius kept the bridge in the brave days of old End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of the Cambridge Book of Poetry for Children by Kenneth Graham.